Hi guys, and welcome to part 2 of the Fursuit Digitigrade Bodysuit Tutorial by Cleefsuits. So we're going to start out this time by stuffing the padding pieces we've cut and sewn, um, and then stitch up the, the stuffing gaps from the outside. Here you can see I've pinned them onto the DTD so I can perfect the shape and position on the wearer. Thread colour isn't important at this point as it won't be seen, but a matching colour is best for cosmetic reasons on the inside of the suit. Just a word of advice, don't sit on the floor and work like I do. I'm a little pushed for space, so the floor is the only place I can work on larger scale projects. If you do work on the floor, don't be an idiot and have as terrible posture as I do. I'm trying to correct it, but lifelong bad habits are difficult to break. Here you can see I'm going back and pinning the pieces onto the dummy. I do this an awful lot over the process to test and refine the shape that I'm looking for. My initial plan for patterning the legs is the same as always. Cover it in plastic wrap and tape it up. This is the same way I pattern heads and any other 3D pieces that I'm trying to recreate or cover. I needed to use some extra material on the end of the leg as I didn't know how long the legs will have to be. This is because I haven't accurately measured the wearer's dimensions against the dummy and because I don't know how high up the legs the feet will sit. I cut a slit in the tape here so that I could reshape the pattern. I'm using an older foot that I made that I really love the shape of to act as a placeholder so I can try and estimate the correct shaping. Once I'm happy with the approximate shape of the leg, I cut off the tape and plastic with a centre seam up the middle of the leg. This will be where the seam is on the fur. I try and think about this when patterning to minimise the use of lots of small pieces uh, and keep them as large as I possibly can. The newspaper I taped onto the crotch is something I do when I pattern any bodysuit. This gives me a larger area on the inside of the leg so the wearer has some extra movement and comfort. This suit will have a dropped crotch effect, so I'll end up bulking this area out quite a lot. Now I didn't actually find the tape method useful this time around for patterning the bodysuit because I was trying to create a pattern that I could flip and use for both sides of the leg, inside and out. I opted to try draping some scrap fabric over the leg and pinning it in place. Once happy with how it fell, I could cut a seam up the middle on the front and back of the fabric to produce a single piece that can make up both sides of the leg when flipped. After I remove the fabric, I refine the shape on the edges. I try to avoid cutting off too much of the material as I don't want it to be too tight. I trace this shape onto another piece of scrap fabric so I can pin the edges together, or I use binder clips. Uh, and check the shape uh, on the leg. 
The crotch area of this piece can be cut as I go. You can see me here shaping the inside of the leg piece of fabric around the newspaper that I added in the crotch to add out the, the extra little bit of space there. To pattern the rest of the body, I go back to the tape method, as I know there are a lot of complex shapes that I will need to incorporate into the pattern. I wrap all of the one side that I'm working on and go over the edge of the scrap fabric pattern on the legs. I don't tape the arms. I then use any kind of tape, in this case I use masking tape as it's cheaper, and wrap all areas of the torso. I can draw on where the markings will go with a permanent marker, and this will help me identify the rest of my pattern pieces. This is where I decided to drop the crotch a little bit more, and all I did was simply cut off the plastic and tape where I had already taped it down there, um, added more newspaper padding, and then just covered the tape back over again. Um, I can edit the, the fabric inside of the leg to, to fix this part later on. The next step is to remove all of the pieces using scissors and or a craft knife, being extra careful not to cut the dummy or myself. Uh, I use a ruler to find the very centre line as I was careful to go just a little over it before to allow myself some waste. I happen to be a little bit forgetful of the camera here, it's difficult remembering to re-angle it every time I move. I cut the remainder of the pieces out on the floor and made sure they laid down flat. I labelled these with arrows to show the direction of the fur and the colours I would use. I probably shouldn't have jumped straight to fur here and cut another out in scrap fabric first with a larger seam allowance and a little length in the legs. This is how I recommend you go with your own to avoid mistakes. I basically eyeballed the whole thing as I know where my experience can come in handy but I definitely recommend thoroughly testing pieces and scraps before you move to the more pricey fur. As always, cut your fur out using a craft knife or a utility knife through the back to avoid cutting the fur fibres. Be extra careful of your hands, always cut away from yourself. Don't be a bit stupid like me and leave your hands and your feet and your bare legs in the way. Um, you probably shouldn't do it on the floor either, but again, I don't have enough space in my workshop um, to be able to lay the fur out across the desk. So what I did is cut out one of the legs, both outside and inside, so that I could drape this over the, the padding on the dummy and make sure it fit. Um, I did find that I needed to trim a little bit of seam allowance off, that's why I only cut the one leg out at a time, so I didn't have to waste a little bit more fur um, by cutting both out and realising they're both wrong. After I did the one test fit on the legs, I decided to just go ahead and cut the next one out of fur by using the original pieces I'd cut out as a template. Completely not recommended. Um, it's always best to make a template out of scrap fabric, paper, tape, whatever you want, and use that. Um, I'm just a little bit silly, and I kind of get a bit overconfident sometimes. It's not the end of the world because I sort of know what I'm doing anyway, but... Um, I mean, you could do it this way, but it's up to you guys. I would definitely recommend going down the pattern and template route above all else. 
So that concludes our video for today guys. Um, I'm really sorry I'm not uploading so often, I've just got a lot going on right now. Um, I want to thank um, anybody who supports me or has supported me on Patreon, I know I've lost a couple recently, um, which has been a little bit of a shame, but you guys really make it possible for me to be able to make these videos, because I just can't afford to sacrifice the time otherwise. Um, if you would like to support me on Patreon, I do have